What is going on, guys? It's Gio from the Fandom United podcast. I hope all of you are having a good work week. I'm doing okay. I'm a little bit under the weather, unfortunately. Happened over the weekend. I have a really sore throat and a bit of a cold. Um, I can still smell. I can still taste. So it's not that. But thank you for your concern in case you were. Uh, There's a lot of DC news to get to. A lot of stuff happened over the weekend, surprisingly. And I was laying in bed, going through Twitter, just watching it all happen. And we'll get right to it. But first, I want to get to kind of a feel-good story. Um, You guys know I talk a lot about Zack Snyder's Justice League, rightfully so. Huge DC fan. Anybody who knows me knows I am so looking forward to this movie. Um, I thought the 2017 movie was a huge letdown. Uh, DC's first team-up movie in the golden age of comic book movies. And so this new Justice League coming out on HBO Max that you may have seen advertised or may have seen me talk on this podcast about uh, will do that movie justice. It's the original version. And what I brought that up for is because why that why I brought that up, excuse me, is because I have sort of a feel good story here that I want to share with you from one of the one of the VFX crew members here. This is a uh, Tamara Watts Kent on uh, Instagram, and she's sharing a story about one of the recently released Snyder Cut posters and what it means to her. And I'll read the story quickly. What this image means to me, in 2019, Zach invited me to his screening room to see his cut of Justice League. It was in black and white, and it did exist. It was over three hours long, full of pre-visualization and work-in-progress effects, along with finished visual effects. At times, Zach had to clarify what I was looking at, yet the story kept my attention the entire time. We then had follow-up meetings and scrubbed the reels talking about his vision for the film and the visual effects work that would need to be done to see his complete vision on screen. DJ and I put together a budget and schedule for VFX and Zach pitched it. Nothing like this has ever been done. We figured it would never happen. Then COVID hit. Zach had a film that was already shot. Posts can be done safely at home and VFX companies needed the work. On April 30th, we were surprised and thrilled to hear the film was a go. It has been the most challenging project that I've ever been on. We had six months to do four hours of effects work. Every shot had to be researched to see if it was a previous Zach final to finish the full frame or a work in progress shot from the past that could be archived, unarchived and finished or a brand new shot. The facility spent over a month pulling shots and assets from their archives while WB pulled assets from theirs. Zack Snyder's Justice League has also been the most fun and rewarding project I have been on. Zack, Debbie, and Wes are the best people to work with. They have always treated their crews like family. They are respectful, inspiring, fun, and trusting. Zack knows what he wants and is the first to admit if it's not working. DJ and I were blessed to bring the most of our VFX team along. We could not have hit this schedule and delivered Zach's complete vision without them. They dug, no, sorry, they kept the show moving forward and dug up archive material we thought would be impossible to find. This team delivered over 2,500 shots in seven months. This is unheard of. I am sad to see the project then, but I am grateful to have this opportunity to be a part of it. I did this for Zach and the Steiner family, and DJ, and for the fans that fought for it and deserve to see Zach's vision. Hashtag release a Steiner cut. Hashtag Zach Snyder. So, so heartfelt, so detailed. I love it. You know, this movie, we talk about this, this cut, what it means to the fans. How about the people who needed work during this pandemic when Hollywood shut down? When almost literally the whole world shut down. Um, And this is just one VFX. I bet that sentiment, those feelings are echoed a thousand times more. So just wanted to share that with you guys. I saw it and uh, yeah, it hit me right here. And um, it's a, 
one of many great stories um, in Hollywood for this movie. And um, yeah, thanks for taking the time to read it, guys. Let's get into some DC news. And today we have a new image teasing Jared Leto's Joker in Zack Snyder's Justice League. That's right. Jared Leto's Joker from the Suicide Squad will, will be making an appearance in this upcoming Justice League. Here is a photo from Zack Snyder, and it shows the Joker card and a very blurred teaser image of Jared Leto's Joker. Now, from what we know, this will be a very road-weary Mad Max-like Joker right here. So that tells me this takes place sometime in the future. Um, as we can see here, Joker card and Jared Leto hold, holding it up with a pair of gloves using his middle finger. Uh, that's pretty pretty awesome right there. I like that. And it's a black and white image, but it looks like he's going to be wearing some, uh, obviously, his white face paint and maybe black lipstick and uh, black eyelining as well. And as you can see, Jared Leto has missing hair up top right there. He's rocking long hair. Again, it's a blurred image. just a little tough to see, but... Another example, this will be a very different Joker. And I have another image here to show you. This is a teaser to what I was talking about, where it could be taking place in the future. We see Batman, uh, Joe Manganiello as Deathstroke, and Jared Leto's Joker. They all come together. Uh, this is a theory. They all come together to stop a Superman who has succumbed to the anti-life equation Basically, he's turned evil, and um, they're doing what they can coming together to stop him. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> but, um, hey, this looks great. I am excited to see more of Jared Leto's Joker. Like I said, he is somebody who could benefit a lot from uh, this cut, the character. Um, audiences may all of a sudden love him if not like him even more and this could lead to a calling for Jared Leto's Joker which David Ayer happens to have about a couple hours worth of unseen footage just lying in his editing room probably on a hard drive and um, who knows Snyder Cut could lead to Jared Leto's Joker in David Ayer's original Suicide Squad you know in the movie with Will Smith, Margot Robbie back Back then, you might be a fan of, but I'm hearing there's a much better cut of that movie. And um, I, for one, want to see it. Real quick, I want to play a little bit of Jared Leto talking about Joker and how excited he is, which should only make you more excited. I don't, I don't, you know, you do all this work and then you're done. Uh, so it is, it's nice to revisit things and, um, you know, parts like the Joker, like Sparma, you know, what's really great about those roles is, um, you know, as, as they, 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 yeah, they can be intense and, and dark, but they're also, they, there's a lot of freedom and abandon there. And that's really fun for me. It's fun for the other actors. It's fun for the crew. Oh, yeah. Definitely looking forward to that. We're only 44 days away as of this recording. Can't believe it. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of Zack Snyder's Justice League, let's stay on that. We have a new image as well of Ray Fisher's Cyborg. There it is right there. And then the, the quote, there's a war coming. Martian Manhunter. If you've watched my uh, podcast or listened to them, you know that Martian Manhunter is General Swanwick, played by Harry Lennox in Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. And I really, really dig this um, full-on cyborg look, helmet and everything. From what I've uh, read online from Zack Snyder, the director, he's saying that cyborg wears the helmet or puts on the helmet. The helmet comes on, excuse me, um, when he's flying through walls or buildings or machinery or whatever uh, to get to where he needs to be. Uh, it was a little bit of a teaser back in 2017 and when one of the trailers before this whole movie just got reshot and torn apart. But 
it's great to see this image and to know that we are getting um, a whole different look of Cyborg. And again, if it's great, it, there will be a calling and it will be a very interesting to see how exactly Warner Brothers handles it, um, especially if the fans love Cyborg. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, I don't know the weather, but pulling through, guys, pulling through. Yeah, so, of course, Ray Fisher had to come out and say something because there are those group of fans who, on Twitter, like to complain about every single little thing. And one of the things that fans are upset about, not all fans, but some of them, is the fact that so Cyborg um, in the Teen Titans anim animated show, from what I understand, he says this uh, little phrase, booyah. And apparently it's such a big deal for these fans that Cyborg won't be saying it, at least in this movie, the Snyder Cut. And Ray Fisher, unfortunately, had to come out and say something on Twitter. And he asked a question uh, below. Are, are you just as upset that none of the other characters are using catchphrases, i.e. great hero, this looks like a job for, etc.? If not, why is that? And it's a fair question. It really is. You know, why... Why Why does this catchphrase matter to you so much or to these fans so much? Um, they seem to forget that he did say it already. He said it in the 2017 movie. Booyah. So it's there if you, if you want it. I'm personally, I'm not calling for it. Um, it doesn't matter that much to me. I don't think a phrase, catchphrase like that makes or breaks a character. You know, it's one thing if, you know, they did a Green Lantern movie and they decided not to say what Green Lantern says. Evil smite. Beware my power. Green Lantern slights. But it's not like Cyborg, if he doesn't, doesn't say booyah, like, oh my God, they ruined the character. I get it. He was popular in T-Titans. Okay? But that's not what Zack Snyder's going for. You should know that by now. And if you really want Booya, there's the 2017 movie, which unfortunately won't go away once Snyder Cut comes out. That movie will forever exist. And it's not to say he won't say Booya in a future Justice League movie or Cyborg movie or whatnot. But that's not what Zack, Zack Snyder's going for. That was never what he was going for. And neither was Ray Fisher. So it's unfortunate. I'm sorry if you're upset about that. Move on. Or revisit the, tw the 2017 movie. Oh, man. Anyways, let's move on. And we have some unfortunate Snyder Cut rumors um, regarding WB. Now... There are certain people at WB who don't want to see the Snyder Cut succeed. This is according to a rumor. Now, why would Warner Brothers not want the Snyder Cut to succeed? Well, a few of them were still working for the company back in 2017 when that movie was edited, torn apart. You already know. And what this gentleman here, who I'm about to show you, is saying is, if this movie is, 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 is a success, it won't look good for them. It won't look good at all. Here's Robert Maya Burnett, an insider who has connections to people who know this kind of stuff. Here's the thing. Toby Emmerich, he doesn't want the Snyder Cut to succeed. He wishes it would just go away. I can't even imagine what it's like to get the Snyder Cut made if you're Toby Emmerich and watch this thing happening because basically what the Snyder Cut is, it, it's, it, it basically, it says everyone who worked at the Warner, er, everyone at the highest levels of Warner Brothers that worked on Justice League 
at the time, the, the Justice League that was released, is a fucking idiot. Now, because because they 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 caused that all to happen. You know, they didn't want to push their release date. They fucked Zack Snyder at every turn because after Man of Steel came out, everybody was Monday morning quarterbacking and everybody wanted to change this and change that. They're looking at the dailies and they're like, oh, well, I mean, this isn't the light and lively movie that we thought we were going to get. This doesn't surprise me anymore. Excuse me. The fact that Warner Brothers doesn't want to admit they're wrong. And why would they want to? It looks bad. But this is this isn't just sub you know average franchise. This is DC comics. Okay. When it comes to comic book movie or comic book uh, properties, it's Marvel and DC. And why would you not want this movie to succeed? Other than the fact that it might make you look bad. Who knows? It might bring a new interest to your uh, IP. I just, it's really, it's really sad. Okay. This is the same studio that gave Walter Hamada, the DC Films president, somebody who I've talked about, somebody who I'm critical of now. They gave him an extension after reports came out that Ray Fisher um, tried to go to him about misconducts and he tried to brush it off or hide it, hide part of it. This doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise me at all. And you know what? They should be nervous. They should be sweating because this cut is coming. Snyder cut is coming. And there's a lot of uh, lot of energy around it. There's a lot of fans behind it. And if it's great, boy, they're going to have problems. They are going to have problems for sure. By the way, I need to remind everybody, Warner Brothers is owed by, by Warner Media, that, which is owed by AT&T. So, you got Warner Brothers right here, the people, Toby Emmerich, the people who don't want it to succeed. And you have Warner Media, who's rooting for it. at t who's rooting for it. Yeah. It's not pretty over there. No, it's not. All right, guys. Let's move on to a segment that I call the Nine the News, which is news outside of the world of DC in Hollywood that I find interesting. And... I have one topic to bring up. We have set photos in Marvel's upcoming movie, Thor, Love, and Thunder. The fourth Thor movie starring Chris Hemsworth. And also the returning of uh, Natalie Portman. Also featuring, excuse me, Chris Pratt, Christian Bale, and most of the Guardians of the Galaxy members. And here are the set photos. There is uh, Chris Hemsworth. Jesus Christ. Man, I need to go to the gym <laughs> when they open. And then there's uh, Chris Pratt returning as Star-Lord in his costume. But speaking of costumes, what the hell is Thor wearing? I love it. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> oh, man, these photos are great. I I can't wait for this. I'm going to get to it in a second, but here's another one. We got Craglin, who was member in Guardians of the Galaxy. He was kind of the second in command um, for, from Yondu and the Ravengers. And Nebula to the right, she's back. So, yes, this movie will have some of the Guardians of the Galaxy in there, if not all of them. And, um, as a reminder, Natalie Portman is returning as astrophysicist uh, Jane Foster, Thor's ex-girlfriend. And, and as far as the story, what, what it's hinting at, her character is undergoing cancer treatment and eventually becomes a superhero, mighty female Thor, gaining her 
powers similar to Thor. And as you can see, director right there, Taika Waititi, um, giving her um, Molinier the hammer and signaling that, yep, Lady Thor, Mighty Thor is on the way. It's a great photo. And, of course, Christian Bale making his uh, MCU debut as the villain, Gore the God Butcher. I'm sure Marvel will explain very uh, briefly and vaguely who he is, but basically he's somebody who, along with his family, believed in gods, and uh, something bad happened to his family. He finds out gods could have saved them, but didn't. Um, He gains possession of what's called an all black, the necro sword, which gives him powers. And he goes after Thor. I did a terrible job of explaining it, but basically he's the bad guy and he's Christian Bale and he's going to bring it. Can't wait for this movie. Very excited about it. You know, one of the things I really, really enjoyed in the Avengers Endgame was the uh well and in Infinity War as well was Thor's relationship with the Guardians and specifically uh Star Lord Chris Pratt. Uh you wanted to see more of it and Marvel being Marvel, giving the fans what they want, we're gonna see more of Thor and the Guardians. I cannot wait. So looking forward to this movie. Yeah, exciting stuff over in Marvel and DC as well. See, we cover both on this podcast. Anyways, guys. If you stayed this long, thank you so much for joining me. I'm really under the weather right now, but I'm trying my best. I want to talk about this stuff. I wish I could talk about it in my normal voice, but it's rough. I'm going to go back to bed and get some rest, but thank you so much for joining me. Let me know your thoughts on the topics today, what you're looking forward to, what you're potentially critical about. Let me know. I appreciate the conversation. I appreciate your time. I appreciate the subscription. And I'll see you guys later on this week, hopefully when I'm better, with another Phantom United podcast. Until then, be safe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you then.